probably shouldn't have went that way. Let me see if I can get this right. Uh, that's out of focus. Out of focus. That looks about right. Some real shit though. I, I couldn't be more excited to just make a video and talk to you guys. You are really, really cool people. I read a lot of you guys' comments and a lot of the times I can't get to every single one of you guys, but I just wanted to let you know, you're fucking awesome. Keep being awesome. What's going on with you guys? The Cali Effect King of Games here. And today it is going to be a steal. I, I can't see. Today, it, I, I look really goofy, don't I? Today, it is going to be a steal. Not only on this video, I'm gonna be bringing you a tier list on the best hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm actually gonna give you reasons why they are the best and applications to play them. Let, let me um, let me flip this. Uh, I think I think we uh, we did that part. So of course, if you wanna see more videos like this, then be sure to destroy. You know what? Do it again. Be sure to destroy. Wait, we might have to do it three times because I, I need that a red button gray. So be sure to destroy that subscribe button, but also be sure to hit that notification bell because well, we just too strong. So right here, I am here in the tier list maker with uh, some pretty good hand traps. We have five different categories. The better be caught with it. You guys already know these are the hand traps you probably should be playing in your main board or sideboard. From there, we have the underrated hand traps. These are really, really good hand traps that everyone is sleeping on. We have really good hand traps, not to be confused. Underrated can be really good hand traps as well. It's not above the really good, but these hand traps are gonna be common inside of a lot of decks and have multiple uses against some of the top strategies. Next, we have situational, uh, kind of speaks for itself. And then we have, oh no, what is you doing, baby? Seriously, if you're playing these hand traps, you might as well just give your opponent the game. So let's go ahead and jump on in into this tier list. Starting off, we have Ally of Justice, Psycho Reader. This is a card that is, oh no, what are you doing, baby? Seriously, what are you doing playing Psycho Reader in March of 2021? Just a few months ago, we said this was a really good Yu-Gi-Oh card, but that's because Drytrons were a top deck. Going into the end of last format, Drytrons were already a deck that struggled. Now they're a deck that struggles and got hit. Currently, right now, I would not be playing Psycho Reader in any type of deck. There are just better hand traps that can either A, hit Drytrons, and B, hit multiple other decks. Artifact Lancia is a card that I feel you better be caught with it. Artifact Lancia is arguably a main board staple now. This card can completely shut off players' turns against Rocket Dragon Link. They can struggle. They won't be able to summon Levianir, Black and White Dragons, as well as use Chaos Space's Graveyard Effect against Invoked. Well, activating this on an Invocation means they gotta resolve Invocation. Yeah, I know. You gotta fuse with those monsters in your hand to make some crappy monster if you have to. Against Dino Too Strong, it, it is a card that stops Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, Double Evolution Pill, Misc Effect in Graveyard, so yeah, it's pretty good. Overall, Artifact Lantia is one of the most important hand traps. If this card is not in your main deck, which is not a terrible idea, it definitely should be a consideration for your sideboard. Ash Blossom in Joyous Spring is another card that is really, really good. The fall of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring being a card, you better be caught with it to just a really, really good hand trap. Now, Ash Blossom is good because it's generic. It hits just about every single deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's not good because it isn't always the problem solver. Keep in mind, Ash Blossom and Joy Spring only negates the effect. Certain cards will activate and still remain on the field and be a problem for the later turns. Ash Blossom and Joy Spring can't always solve the problem, and then a lot of times your opponent just has the additional extender, because that is a thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! Ash Blossom and Joy Spring is a really, really good hand trap, but if players decided to drop it for cards that are either underrated or could possibly end the opponent's turn, then I wouldn't blank them. Chaos Hunter is a card that is in the situational category. Now, the reason why this card is in the situational category where Artifact Lancia is in the better be caught with it is the fact that Chaos Hunter is a monster that can be interacted with. 
After Artifact lands here, resolves, your opponent can't do a damn thing about it. But Chaos Hunter could be destroyed by battle or a card effect, which would turn back on them being able to banish. DD Crow actually moves to the situational category as well. This card was so good last format. What happened, Cali? Well, DD Crow can be an exceptional card in certain situations, but when going against the top decks like Rocket Dragon Link, which there really isn't a necessarily a card that feels good to crow, or against Invoked, which... <laughs> you crowing we share graveyards i'll always have targets crow alistair <laughs> invocations graveyard effect what are you doing and while against decks like dino dd crowing that misc before it can use its graveyard effect is pretty good again it's one of those cards that are just situational situational doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad Yu-Gi-Oh card it just means in the right situations it'll thrive whereas the other cards are less situational Dimensional Shifter is a card that I feel is in a really good category. I don't think this card is going to be considered underrated because if you can play the card, you probably should be playing the card. Dimensional Shifter can completely end a Yu-Gi-Oh! player's turn. It's one of those cards that are really, really good, but unfortunately not every single deck can take full advantage. Troll and Lockbird is a card that you better be caught with it. This card is oh my god. Drone and Lockbird has the effect that Artifact Lantia sometimes can't. It can end Rocket Dragon Link's turn. It can also be really good against Dino and Dino Hybrids, as well as Alistair the Invoker. Our graveyard? We gotta get cards there first. That requires searching, doesn't it? Drone and Lockbird is a very, very powerful hand trap. I think it's best suited for the side deck though, as opposed to being in the main board, but you could probably surprise and catch some W's off of this card. Effect Mailer is actually a, I'm, I want to put it in the really good category, but I'm going to keep it in situational. The reason why I keep Effect Veiler in the situational category is because it can only be activated during the main phase. Evenly Matched is a card that I think is actually underrated right now. I haven't talked a lot about decks like Eldritch and Back Row Heavy decks, but yeah, Evenly Matched can actually solve that threat. Evenly Matched also pairs up very well with Forbidden Droplets against combo-based decks. Imagine activating Evenly Matched, they activate the negate, and then you, uh, you, you chain droplets. Raindrop, Drip Drop, we ain't evenly matched, you TikTok. The Forbidden Drip is a card that requires you to have all types of money to be able to afford, but comboing it with Evenly Matched is, oh, it's gruesome. Next Fantastical Dragon Phantasme is, oh no, this card is actually underrated. Now I'm not gonna cap, this card is in the situational degree, but the reason why I say that this card is underrated is that no one sees it coming. Rocket Dragon Link is seen as the best deck in Yu-Gi-Oh right now. You know when they summon that Heretic Seal and then those two Link monsters on the side of the field? Don't forget that those are Link cards. And seeing that Virtual Worlds are decently out of the picture, just about every single Yu-Gi-Oh deck uses at least one Link monster. This card can summon itself, prevent your cards from being targeted, and at least draw two cards and shuffle one back into the deck. That's not bad. Ghost Sister in Spooky Dogwood, the card that I spent $30 on. Yeah, we're still here. I'm still hoping and praying for Spooky Dogwood to actually go above the oh no, what are you doing, baby? But until then, what are you doing playing this Yu-Gi-Oh card? Ghost Bell in Haunted Mansion is still a really, really good Yu-Gi-Oh card. Keep in mind, it stops cards like Nadir Servant, Cyframe Gear Gamma, as well as a host of other really powerful Yu-Gi-Oh cards that interact with the Graveyard in Banishment. Ghost Bell is similar to Ash Blossom because it's good at what it does, but since it doesn't stop every single interaction, it's it can be frustrating. Ghost Mourner in Moonlit Chill is actually... Oh, I, I want to put it in underrated. I really want to put it in underrated, but I'm going to put it in the situational category. There's actually quite a few times your opponent would special summon a monster and want to activate its effect. Ghost Warner negates the card effect, and when your opponent tries to get rid of it, they might be paying for it. I can see this card actually coming up in particular situations where you Ghost Warner a card and your opponent has to give up their turn because they don't want to take the damage or can't take the damage. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit is actually, oh man, how the tides have turned. Ogre is actually underrated. 
Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit is a part of that equation that Ash Blossom and Ghost Bell sometimes just can't solve. It can actually get rid of the threat. Ghost Ogre also, while not being able to get rid of the monster, it can destroy the monster, which might get rid of the monster's effect, like Gar Dragon LP trying to resolve. No material I feel is a Yu-Gi-Oh card that is... Oh, I'm going to have to put it in the situational. No material can be a real viable card. Unfortunately, you have to control no cards on your field to use no material, so its uses are far and few between. Herald of Greenlight is officially a, oh no, what are you doing, baby? There are not enough great spell cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game to merit you running Herald of green light and discarding a fairy monster cyber angel benton is at one we we gotta move on guys herald of orange light has moved itself to the situational side it's a pretty big drop for this card but unfortunately it's well deserved herald of orange light is no longer free inside of drytrons and decks that could take advantage of herald of orange light have to outweigh the whisk of discarding this card and a fairy monster have to outweigh the risk re risk Risk. Risk. What, what was I saying before? Herald of Purple Light is definitely going to be the, oh no, what are you doing, baby? If we already struggle to play Herald of Orange Light in our decks, then I mean, don't play this card. Infinite Impermanence is actually a really, really good Yu-Gi-Oh card. Infinite Impermanence is what Effect Veiler wants to be, is what Ghost Mourner tries to be. It's a card that allows you to negate a monster effect, but can also negate back row in the same slot. With the death of True King of All Calamities, this card actually has a pretty viable place. If you decided to play Infinite Impermanence inside of March 2021, you probably won't regret it. It's a pretty decent card. Now, Misk is that card that we better be caught with it, boys. Run three Misk in every deck. If you need a target, run Drac Alio. That's your target. Nibiru is a card that I feel is in the better be caught with it. That's right. We're in a format where decks like to special summon a ton and Nibiru can take full advantage. Nibiru is a card that you better be expecting inside of everyone's either main board or sideboard. It's just a really powerful card that allows you to you know, I mean, you smell what the rock is cooking. Cypher and Gear Gamma is another card that I feel is really, really good. Not as good as in the better be caught with it category, but definitely a very strong card. And if I had to put it in a spot, it'd be at the top of the really good spot because of what it does. Now, Cerevis is going to be in the, oh no, what are you doing, baby? It's a lot better now than before, but it's not a card that we want to consider playing seriously. Skullmeister is also another really, really good Yu-Gi-Oh card. It can stop graveyard effects. Is there really much else to be said? Skullmeister stops graveyard effects in a format where players use graveyard effects. It's almost a no-brainer why this card is somewhat decent. Being able to activate when players activate those hard once per turn effects, whereas Crow has to be proactive, meaning that they can put more cards in the graveyard and then activate it, still a good card though. By popular demand, we've added two new cards to our hand trap tier list. Ghost Ogre or Ghost Ghost Reaper. <laughs> Ghost Reaper in Winter Cherries is a card that I feel is really situational right now. There are so many good Yu-Gi-Oh decks, and in between those Yu-Gi-Oh decks, there are so many different avenues for combo sequences. Unless your deck does not play an extra deck whatsoever, Ghost Mourner, <laughs> Ghost Mortar. I keep getting this card's name wrong. Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries isn't a card that I think you'll be able to get maximum potential out of. When we get to a format where there's like three decks and they all rely on one particular extra deck card, I think that's where Ghost Reaper will be able to shine. But until then, very situational unless your locals is like that. And then we have the new card, Miradoria, Miriota, Miradoria, this card. Miradoria is going to get to the underrated category. Boy, this card has so much potential. Like seriously, if it didn't say target in its card text, I I think it'd be really good. The fact that this card effect cannot be negated is like, boy, that's a headache. I don't think that it has an exact place right now, but I feel that this card is going to be overly dominant very, very soon. 
Well, that is all that I have for the hand trap tier list, guys. If you guys feel that I missed certain hand traps like Karibo, which is the best hand trap of all time, then go ahead and let me know down below in the comment section. Also, let me know what do you think about this hand trap tier list? With the meta currently being defined as Rocket Dragon Links being the deck to beat, I feel like this is a very accurate and very good tier list. But of course, you guys are always welcome to post down below. Also, be sure to check out these videos as I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day, guys, and stay special.